Well, my beloved sends love. She's back in Colombia, and she'll be joining me in a in a week or so. But uh, in the meantime, she said, "Please, please, please convey my love uh, to the congregation." And she does that. So please receive that. I'd like us to go to Revelations chapter three, verse seven to thirteen. Wow, we are almost at the end of the first month of 2024. And I believe this is a word of alignment. I want to focus uh, on the application of this word. The relevance that it has for you in terms of the rhema application. While you keep your finger there, I'm going to pray and then I just want to lay a foundation. Father, we thank you that your word is alive and active. According to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. You are your word. You are the word made flesh. Your word is more than just a written scripture. It is scripture upon which the breath of God has breathed. And it is made alive to us. Jesus, you are that living word. And so, Lord, as we partake of your word today, I thank you that you strengthen us, your people. I pray that faith will come, that we will be able to not just stand and withstand, but overcome. I pray for every challenge in this house this morning. Every challenge that every individual face, challenges that marriages face, challenges in families, challenges and situations within this body. We lift that before you this morning. We thank you that you're the God of breakthrough and that your word has the power To establish your kingdom in the earth. Your truth in the earth. Your word has the power to call things which are not as if it is. I pray that you teach us, Lord, how to transact with your word. Teach us the secrets of the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom. That we may have what your word says we can have. That we may do what your word says we can do. We are not just overcomers. We are more than overcomers. Through Christ who strengthens us. And so teach us Lord how to transact. You've given all your promises in your word. According to 2 Peter chapter 1. You say that through the promises of God. We can become part. Takers of your divine nature. And so show us, Lord, what it is to be a spirit being who lives in a temporary body, who has an identity, a spirit, citizenship in another realm in the kingdom of God. And show us how to take the realities of heaven and to bring it here on earth. You did not come to give us a religion. You came to give us a way. Jesus, you are the way and you are the truth and you are the life. Show us, Lord, not to live under testament in testament, Old Testament reality. And the, under the Old Testament dispensation and go back to that reality but show us the benefits of the cross what it is to live Lord in your provision that which you've paid for we pray this in Jesus name Amen, amen. amen. and Amen the people of God said amen. amen and so I want to talk Revelation chapter 3 verse 7 to 13 but before I go there I want, to, I want to speak from the perspective of Rhema. And the Rhema word of God is. Alive and active. Amen. It's alive and active. What is the Rhema? Jesus. Okay, so so 
The Logos Word of God, the Word of God is divided in the, in the Greek. When it speaks about, about the Word, it does not speak about the Word just as Logos, which is the Word from Genesis to Revelation. That's the total written Word of God. And that we have to learn, we have to study Scripture. But the Rhema Word is a specific Word to a specific person in a specific situation at a specific time. Amen. So out of all the wisdom and the full counsel of God, when you are in a situation, I have a situation today, God is not going to quote to us the scripture from Genesis to Revelation. Now all of scripture is important for us to study, to learn, because the keys of the kingdom is in there. But we find ourselves at times in situations facing certain things, going through certain trials, experiencing certain heartache or pain of the soul, some things in our body. That is when God comes and he gives a specific word for you in that situation. In the Old Testament, Israel went through the wilderness for 40 years. And what did God do? He fed them from heaven with manna. If you fast forward in John chapter 6, when either the Jews, when Jesus is multiplying the loaves and the fish, he's saying, I am the bread of life. If you eat from me, you will live forever. The Jew says, are you greater than Moses who gave our ancestors manna? And Jesus answers, Moses didn't give them the manna. He says, I am the manna. God gave them that manna as a prophetic picture of me. That one day he will release me from heaven. So that everybody who eats of me will never hunger. So he says, all of that 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, where manna fell Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that was one reality. Historically, it happened. Yeah. But that was not the purpose. That was the lower purpose. The higher purpose was God used those 40 years of manna reigning from heaven as a prophecy pointing to Jesus. Yeah. And it says, just like the manna fed Israel every day of the week. So I am now the bread of life and the heavenly manna and I desire to feed you. In fact, God said to to, to Israel, the manna for Monday, you cannot keep over till Tuesday. It's daily bread for that specific day. Good to see you. The bread for Monday, the manna for Monday is for Monday. If you take it into Tuesday, it will rot. It will decay. Because there's a specific bread for a specific day. That is the rhema. If you see the rhema in action, Luke chapter 5. The Bible says that Jesus came to the edge of the river and there were two boats that were empty. Belonged to Peter and the brothers James and John. Jesus got into one of the boats and he said, let's push it out Lord, into the deep because I want to use this to project my voice to speak to this crowd. Now Jesus did not need the boat because this is the one that walks on water. In fact, he got into the boat of Peter. Now, if you recall, there was a time that when Jesus walked on the water, Peter was in the boat, so he has first-hand experience that Jesus doesn't need his boat. 
They thought it was a ghost. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, Rhema again, Lord, if it's you, bid me, tell me to come. And Jesus answered to Peter, come. In other words, he gave him a rhema. And Peter got out of the boat. He did not walk on the water, he walked on the word. He walked on the authority of that word. It was the word that gave him the faith to get out of the boat and walk on the water. And when his eyes was taken off Jesus who is the word and off the instruction or invitation, come, walk on my word, walk in the authority of my word, my word will sustain you, my word will hold you up. When he took his eyes off that and he turned to the storm, the Bible says he sang. A great news, the hand of Jesus was there yes. to pull him up again. Amen. Another incident is in Luke chapter 5. And so, Jesus gets into the boat, ministers to the crowd, and then he says to Peter, let's go out into the deep. When he gets to the deep, he says, now let down your nets for a catch on the right hand side. But he says, Lord, you don't understand. I was here last night. There was nothing going on. There's no fish here. These waters are empty. <clears throat> I'm a seasoned fisherman. I know how this is. <clears throat> last night I've been here for hours. We caught nothing. But on the authority of your word, yeah. yes. I will let my net down. And so the rhema word of God for you and I is not, you know what, I tried this once, I tried this twice, and I give up. It doesn't work. You keep on keeping on standing on the word until the word produces the result. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth will pass away, the word of God will not. Yes. And I sense that the Lord wants to build your faith this morning. Whatever form of discouragement you are experiencing right now, whatever ever has come against your faith, the Lord wants to speak encouragement because all things are possible for the one who believes. Would you raise your hands to the Lord? I sense, really sense that the Lord is breathing, exhaling. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God. The spirit of life. The spirit of encouragement. The spirit of comfort over people here. Perhaps your year has ended rough and it started rough. This morning, the Lord is sending you a word of encouragement. As you're about to step into provision, you're about to step out of what you're in into the promised land of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 to 13. And I want to talk about this morning very quickly. Stepping through the open door in 2024. Stepping through the open door in 2024. <coughs> Revelation chapter 3 verse 7 to 13. To the angel of the church or to the pastor or the overseer of the church in Philadelphia. Philadelphia means brotherly love. Right. These are the words of him who is holy and true who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. Now please listen to the next word. He says, see. Everybody say that. 
see you. I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. If you don't see it, if I don't see it, even though the door is open, it is as if it's closed. Amen. Have you ever heard seeing is like, I understand, I get it. Sometimes you have a conversation with somebody that says, I, I, I don't see it. During math school, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see what you mean. And then when, it, when the revelation comes in, ah, now I see. Now I understand. Now I get it. And he said to you, see, recognize. You have two sets of eyes. You have the eyes of the natural and the eyes of the spirit. Yeah. And there are certain things that God sets before you that you will not be able to apprehend or comprehend and apprehend with the natural eyes. You have to see with the eyes of revelation and eyes of the spirit to be able to see the door and to walk through that door of opportunity. And so he says, I've seen that I've placed before you an open door that no one can shut. In fact, we're just going to do seven to eight. And so the first thing I want to say is that God spoke this word to the church of Philadelphia. Which is, which is, Philadelphia means brotherly love. And so I believe that the Lord is speaking to you as a church. And he's saying, because you are a church that understands the love of God and pursues the love of God. He says, there is an open door that is put before you. An open door to reap the harvest. An open door to the hearts of people who are broken and hurting. Yeah. Who needs to come into the kingdom. Recognize that all around you I've set before you in a harvest field. Recognize that and step through that. Because you are a people of Philadelphia, you are a people who understand the love of God. You are a people who do not just read about the love, but people who experience the love and share the love of God. God says, I've set before you an open door. I want you to close your eyes again. I want to pray into this because I really sense that God wants to touch people's hearts this morning. There is a baptism of love that God wants to pour out. This was a message, not to all the churches, there were six other churches. It was only to the church of Philadelphia. A church that understood the love of God. You know what the love of God does? It drives out fear. Fear of the future. Fear of torment. Fear of pain. Fear of the unknown. And so won't you just open up your heart to receive the love of God this morning? Lord, I thank you for a baptism of love. In Jesus' holy name. Just breathe in. And just receive the love of God. Let it saturate your heart. <coughs> saturate your mind. Saturate your spirit. Saturate your body. Amen. And so the seeing part, we cannot have what we cannot see. In, in Genesis chapter 13, when God came to Abram, he was with Lot. And before God got ready to let Abram step into what he had for him, the Bible says, Lot separated from Abram. And many times that is what happens. Many times there are certain people who cannot step with you through certain open doors. And so sometimes Lot was in covenant with God. 
but he was separated from Abram. Only when Lot was separated did God come to him and say, Now, Abram, this is my plan. This is the open door that I have for you. And he says, Lift up your eyes and see. As far as your eye can see, this land I give to you as a possession. I want you to note the following. There was an open door for Abram to walk into territory that God gave him. God says, open up your eyes and see. But there is a limitation. The limitation is not on God's side. It is as far as the eyes of Abram could see. As far as your eye will see, that is as far as God will move in your life. He is limitless, but we have a limitation. If we stop him, if our belief, which is the eyes of the spirit or the eyes of faith, that is how you see, right? If we stop him and say, God, only up till here, this is what you can do, or this is what you cannot do, that is where God will stop. We limit him. But if we can open up our eyes and see what God shows us, we can have what he says we can have. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 34, taste and taste and so what we eat in the spirit will open up our eyes. The more we eat of Jesus, that is how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the, by the word. Now let's go to Psalm 19. Let's just quickly go a, a few scriptures. And just see what the psalmist says about the word. <coughs> Psalm 19, I think it's verse, um, <coughs> verse 8. It says, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, doing what? Enlightening the eyes, bringing light or revelation or understanding, or knowledge, or wisdom, or vision to the eyes. Psalm 119. Let's go there. And I think it is verse 130. Psalm 119, the longest chapter in the Bible. Psalm 119, verse 130. So taste and see that the Lord is good. The entrance of your word enlightens my eyes. It brings light or vision to my eyes. If, if I don't have light or vision, I cannot see. The more I eat from the word, the more I dwell in the word, the more the word of the Lord enters my heart, the more my eyes are enlightened to see. To see beyond the obstacle. To see beyond the problem. To see beyond the limitation. And to see the limitlessness of God's provision. To see what he is showing us. So, so verse 30, 130 says. Again, not thy word gives light. The entrance of your word into my heart gives light. And understanding to the simple. So it's not just the word of God. It is the word that enters my heart. It is the word that enters my mind. It is the word that I receive. That brings light and revelation. Amen. Amen. Psalm 119. Same uh, chapter. Let's move up to verse 105. So the Lord is saying before, before, before we talk about the key, before I show you the door, I want to deal with your vision. What are you seeing? Are you seeing the problem? Are you seeing the mountain? Are you seeing the obstacle? 
Or you see the promise? Are you seeing what I'm showing you? So 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And so the Lord brings light and vision to our eyes that we can see what is the next step. Amen. Let's go to Job chapter 22, verse 8, I believe it is. In fact, before we go there, let's go to, I don't know how you guys pronounce it, but Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Chapter 2. How do you pronounce it? Habakkuk. Let's <laughs> just say happy. Let's go to happy. People, the joy of the Lord is your strength. It does not matter what you're going through. Do not let the enemy take your joy. Joy is not joy in the circumstance. The kingdom of God is not joy in my circumstance. It's not joy because of things that's happening on the outside. It's joy in the spirit. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It is joy in the spirit. That's why he says, count it all joy when you face trials of all kinds. Satan is after our joy because the joy of the Lord takes your strength, your resilience. It compromises your immune system. But if you have the joy of the Lord, you are, st you are, you are strong. Finally, my brethren, uh, Ephesians 6, 10. Uh, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Yes. That is not the Lord's responsibility. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Yes. Through our knowledge of Him. Yes. We have to contend for the faith. You have to do that. You've got to strengthen yourself in the Lord. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. Satan hates you. And so he will bring every and any situation and circumstance on the outside against you. But you know what? The kingdom of God is within. Yes. So we don't fight with the weapons of our warfare from the outside. We fight by faith on the inside. Full of the word of God. We see, we know, we speak, we declare, and we will have what we will say. Amen. That is what he says. That is how you overcome Satan. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Your word carries power. I came across an article in December about uh, quantum physics, quantum mechanics. Who knows about that? You know? You know about quantum mechanics? I've only read. I'm not. <laughs> But they have something called the observer effect. This is a new discipline about 50 years or so old that has completely thrown the scientific world in a tailspin. Because up to uh, the 1950s, the, the world, the outside world, has been interpreted through classical physics, Newtonian physics. So Newton sees the apple falls from the tree, comes up with the law of gravity, right? And so they, the scientists discovered, they went and they took the external particles and they brought it down into the smallest components, right? Protons, electrons, and the smallest is now what they call a quark. And so what they did was, they did an experiment and they discovered something, I'm just going to try and simplify it, they discovered something incredible. They passed light, particle of light through what they call the double slit experiment. And the light when it passed through showed reflection on all different kind, on, a, on, a, on, a different, on, a, on one surface in different spots. When they pass it through, it just reflected on different areas on the backdrop. They call it the wave of probability. Then they were trying to figure out is the light goes to slip number one or slip number two. So what they did was they measured it. The moment they measured 
this light particle that was bopping through all the different problems, not one specific spot it went to, it went to random places, you get the picture. The moment they measured it, that light particle went to one spot. It collapsed, what they call the wave particle was collapsed, and instead of that light particle going to different places, it only went to one spot. And they call it the observer effect. This is it. They say the moment human intention is added to that equation, then the probabilities collapses and there's only one specific outcome. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> and so the scientists are grappling with now the reality of infinite intelligence to say that what has been created is not an accident or probability just it is by somebody's intention that releases a specific outcome now that is absolutely in line with what Jesus taught What's, what did he say all things are possible for those who believe not one thing all things so whatever you believe if you believe it's there it will be there if you believe it's here it will be here if you believe it's down it's going to be down if you believe it's empty it's going to be empty if you believe it's full it's going to be full all things are possible for he will believe but he says through mark 11 let me show you how i create and how God creates. So verse 22 of Mark 11, he says, it's translated, have faith in God. But the original is, have the faith of God. In other words, believe and create and operate like God created in Genesis 1. In fact, God introduces us to how he creates his world. The third, the second chapter, verse of chapter one, the world is in chaos, there's darkness, there's war, wasteland, there's barrenness. God could have said anything, oh guys, let me show you, introduce myself to you, I am God, you know, none of that. The first thing he introduces us is how he creates. And what he did was, he said, let there be creation, no. Let there be light. Let there be a tree. Let there be fish in the sea. And it was so. Whatever he spoke came into being. Scientists discover that now. 50 years old, quantum mechanics. That is what changed the entire spectrum. Everything in it joined. This whole artificial intelligence because of this thing, that is, that is what exploded. Quantum computing and all of these things. That revelation. So he says, all things are possible, but if you have one mountain to move, this is how you do it. Believe like God believes. Have the faith of God. If you think about the problem, speak about the problem, about the mountain, no. He says, if you have faith and you say to the mountain what you want it to do, not what you don't want, you give it an instruction. Not I don't like you. What is that? I'm sick and tired of this mountain. Nothing's going to move. I can't take this anymore. This is just too much. Nothing is moving. Mm -hmm. Come on. What you will have if you say you are sick of that, you will have more sickness of that. You become more sick and tired. Yeah. <laughs> you will have whatever you say. So Jesus says, if you want the mountain to be moved, don't speak the problem. Speak the outcome. Speak the solution. Tell the thing what it must 
two. Yes. Say to the mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the midst of the sea. Somebody, oh, okay, I thought this scripture was up. <laughs> this is Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24. And do not doubt in your hearts. Listen to what he says. Thank you. Whoever walked to the mountain, I say to you, this is the word of God, this is the rhema, this is Jesus who became flesh. He says, let me give you inside information and insight information into how we create our world. How I, the word, operate. He says, so I say to you, another way that says, it says for surety or truly, truly, in other words, you can take this thing to the bank. Whoever, this is not even limited to a Christian. The Bible says the sons of darkness are more shrewd than the sons of light when it comes to money mula. Jesus says that. And then he says the way I handle my money, God looks at that because he says, if I don't handle my money right, who will give me the true riches of heaven? Right? So he says, in that context, the sons of darkness know more about the principles of the kingdom. Perhaps they reject the king. But the law of gravity works for you, whether you're black or white, rich or poor. Educated or uneducated, it does not distinguish between a person. It's not a respect of persons. The law of gravity works for whoever handles it. It works. So that's why Jesus says these laws, sorry, of the kingdom, whoever think about the mountain, go and see a psychologist about the mountain, drink. A what? Says. Say what he says. No. Oh. oh. Okay, you want to step ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever drinks a, 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 a pain tablet or, or some medicine to cool down your nerves. Huh? The way you deal with your out external world is you frame it by your internal world. As a man think, so you are. Now, now, now he's going into doing, but you need to understand before we go to doing, we are, we are in the being phase. As you think, so you are. And the thinking what God designed for us to do is Acts 17, 28. In Him we live. In Him we move. In Him we have our being. And so out of the, the, the DNA of my spirit, let us make man in our likeness. In our image, let them be like us in this world. In their being. Satan is the one that brought about the doing. Hey baby, can we talk? When he came to Eve. He said, mm, I've got an offer for you that you cannot resist. He's giving something away from you. <coughs> There's actually more to you than when he meets the eye. But I've got the secret. In all of you, <coughs> like God, they were already like God. Mm. He saw them, not a half truth, he saw them a whole lie. Mm. If you want to be like him, because he's holding something for me, I've got the secret. Then there's something you must do. See that? Mm -hmm. Eat from the fruit. Do this thing on the outside, then you will become. God says, mm -mm, just in me. You live, you move, and you have your being. Yes, hallelujah. So he says, now that you have your identity, 
Because you are like God. <clears throat> Psalm 82. God does a monologue. It's an eloquy. And he says, God says in the congregation of the mighty, I'm just God, uh, establishing us in the truth. He judges among the sons of men. He's speaking to himself. He says, I said you are God with a small g. Meaning, God like you are sons of the offspring, in fact, he says, of the God. Of God. But you will die like mere men. With your spirit. Even though it's regenerated, regenerated, new species. Second Corinthians 5, 17. If any man is what? In Christ. That's the only place we can be. You are a new creation. You are a brand new species that the world has never ever seen. John 10. Jesus does a miracle to say, they want to stone him. He says, why are you stoning me? He says, if your law says, quoting Psalm 82, that you are God's, and then he puts there, you can read it, and scripture cannot be broken, why do you have an issue with me if I say that I'm the son of God? So what Jesus is saying, come back into your identity. Realize who you are. And live from that place. As not just an overcomer. More than an overcomer. Yes. You've had great boxers in this country. Muhammad Ali. Mike Tyson. And they get millions for a fight. And when that fight is over and they are victorious. They get the belt. And they get the five million dollar check. Muhammad Ali or Mike. They are the champions, they are the conquerors, they are the overcomers, they overcome. But after everything is said and done, they've got to go home. And they go home, face all beaten up, swollen, eyes closed, swollen, knock on the door, wifey opens up. She says, hi baby. And she holds out her hand and he gives her the check. She is more than a conqueror. <laughs> That's what Jesus did on the cross for us. He became sin that we can become righteousness. He became sick that we can become whole. He became poor that we can become rich. He descended into hell that we can ascend to heavenly places. So he says, whoever. And that is true about the world. How much more us? So that's why we preface it with have the faith of God. <clears throat> Whoever says to this not. Specific. Be removed from the casting of the sea. I want you to do this. No, I'm sick and tired of this job. I cannot take this anymore. They pay me peanuts. You don't talk like that. What do you want? Mm. Right now I'm at 54,000 a year. I think I am worth 88. Nothing less than 88. The kind of job that I'm looking for is I have been doing this, but this is really what I'm looking for. So you release your words and you will have us whatever you say. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. Right, right. Now, like the scientists have come 50 years ago, oh, 6,000 years later from the revelation of Genesis, they talk about quantum mechanics. The wave of probabilities a, B, C, D, E, F, all these probabilities, all of this can happen. These are the possibilities, like they say in the quantum realm or the quantum field. It's nothing different, it's just the spirit realm, mm -hmm. the realm of creation. Jesus says all these possibilities exist, the mountain can stay the mountain. But if you say you create from the invisible realm, 
Be removed from the constancy and does not doubt in your heart. But believe the things you say, not God said. He said it already, but you take it now and you put it in your mouth. Because in this realm, you govern. Yes. <laughs> let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And let them be a reflection on the earth of the reality of heaven. Let them govern on the earth like we govern in the heavens. That's why I said, after your being, this is what I give you. Be fruitful. Be multiplied. And have dominion on the earth. Yeah. Especially over those creeping things. <laughs> Snakes and scorpions and serpents. Rule. Govern. Isaiah chapter 9. And to us a child is born and a son is given. And the government is upon his what? His shoulders. The shoulders is not in the head. The shoulders is on the body. That means it's the body of Christ's responsibility to govern in the earth realm. To carry the kingdom of God where we are. Yeah. Right. And the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. But a power. Wherever Jesus came, he applied this. There was a natural situation, five loaves, two fishes. And what he did was from within, he released the power and he changed that situation. As it was in heaven, so it was on earth. So if you say, don't doubt in your heart, but believe those things will be done, he will have whatever he Is it possible that I can sleep myself out of my miracle? Right. Is it possible that the Bible says, <clears throat> Proverbs 18 21, life and death is in the power of the tongue, and he who loves it will eat its fruit. The return, the harvest, the result of what I say. The backdrop to this is a few verses earlier where Jesus passes the fig tree. And he's looking for fruit and there's nothing. So your job can be the fig tree. I, I've now been looking for something here and this is all I've got. I'm done. Watch what he says. So he looks for a return. He looks for a heart and says, okay, you are not aiding my purpose. The purpose of the kingdom. The purpose to serve me, to sustain me, to sustain me. You're not serving that. So, you are taking up space in my life, in my world. Now, in another parable, when there was a similar situation about a fig tree, remember? He was about to say to the gardener, cut it out. Remember that? Pull it out. The gardener said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Please, Master, let's give it another year. Yeah. Remember that? Let's put on some compost. Let's give some manure. Let's give some bone meal. And, and let's just water it. And perhaps after a year, it will begin to produce fruit. Then after a year, let's come and inspect it again. But there are certain things Jesus says, I will not tolerate. And the way I deal with it is through the power of my word. The authority is in my mouth. So that truth... <coughs> He is teaching on the back of the encounter with a fig tree. <clears throat> no fruit. And so he looks and he says, well, what a disappointment. Horrible tree. Useless. Mm -mm. He said, I want a specific outcome. So, no longer will anyone eat fruit from you ever again. And he walks past. Yeah. 24 hours later, he passes by that same tree. And Peter, Peter is like features all over this guy. Is he can master. Listen to his verbiage. Jesus said, he spoke to the tree, right? No longer 
will anyone eat fruit from you ever again? That's all he said. Listen to what Peter said. Master, the tree that you cursed is withering from the roots. Jesus didn't say, I curse you. But he spoke negatively to it. He spoke death to it. Is it possible that I can be cursing my destiny, my children, my environment, my job, my progress? By words that come out of my mouth, is it any wonder that Jesus says, I'll be justified by the words I speak or condemned? We'll give an account for every careless word that comes out of our mouth because we don't understand the purpose of words. Jesus introduced the importance of that in the beginning of the book. Genesis is the, is the means beginnings. In fact, new beginnings. Where we get the word genetics from. Genealogy from. Origin. Beginning. And you know what he says in the book? In the beginning and at the end. Revelation 22 says, I am the beginning. I am the beginning. And everything that was created, Colossians 1 verse 16, was created in the beginning. So when he says in the beginning God created, it's not time. The beginning is no time. The beginning is a person. Mm. He is the beginning and the end. Mm. Yeah. Colossians 1, 6. All things that were created were created by him. And the, 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 the Greek word is en, even in him. Yes. That's why you take, take man out of God. He dies. <clears throat> In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. So the whole thing is Jesus come to seek and save that which is lost. Man that was pulled and plucked out of God. The moment you eat from this tree, you will surely die. Death is separation. Mm. Yeah. So you lose your identity. And ever since man has been hooked in by Satan. Hey baby, can we talk? Do you want to become more? Do you want people to think about you that you're just like this girl? I give you a bigger car, it's a bigger house, a cool girl. You've now been with this model for 20 years. Why don't you trade it in and get a different one? Because it's all extra. If you do this and this and this and this, you will become. And the whole world has been put on a treadmill. We're running after wind. Because we think if we get there, we will become. Now I have respect. Now you will look at me different. Take all of that stuff away. Who are you? Yeah. Young people. Choosing careers, making decisions. You don't do that based on money. Externals. Because life is not lived from the outside. It's lived from the inside. And so the first word that he says is see. There's a Chinese proverb that says we don't look at the world the way it is. We look at the world the way we are. If I'm bitter, if I'm angry, I look at the world, everybody's after me. Everybody's out to hurt me. And I'm fighting. That's the only mode I'm in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and so identity is important. See. And the way you can see is to eat from the tree of life. Thank you, Jesus. Job 22, 8 says... Job 22, verse 8. 
It shows you. Now you can you can believe this, believe and receive, or doubt and do without. This is something we have to learn. We've got to practice stop with something small. Recognize this power in your mouth. Recognize that you can. I believe this. I believe it's God's will. I believe it. Stop with something small that's measurable. I'm going to declare it and declare it. I'm going to speak it forth. The first vehicle that I drove, I did it that way. I had a VW that was given to me, a VW microbus. Big, like tank. I wanted a Toyota. So what I did was, I went to the um, dealership. And to come look at the car. Picked out the color that I wanted. Memorized it. Got into the vehicle. And then familiarized myself with everything on the inside. Dashboard, steering wheel, smell, gears, everything. I said, I like to take a test drive. <laughs> and so I went, took a test drive, not long, came back and said, Is that all? You don't want to go? I said, Hand the key. I said, I'll be back in two months to get my car. I walked out of the dealership, got into the VW microbus. On the outside, people looked that I was sitting in Buttercup. <laughs> But I was sitting in my tail. <laughs> that moment, everything changed. I was looking, when I look at the steering wheel, I was driving the tail. I was smelling it. Two months later, I walked in and I said, I'm coming to collect my car. Every vehicle, I've given away vehicles. Every vehicle, I've, I've bought like that, with currency of faith. You will have whatsoever you say. Now, now, things in the kingdom is the lower part. Because he says, seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added. Satan has said, oh, I want to give you all these things. No, 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 no. I use my faith because I am after 100 million souls. That is what I'm after. I've seen 1.3 million come to Jesus so far. But I will not rest until I get 100 million and I have a plan. And a strategy. That is where my faith is. But all the other things, it's nothing. Romans 8, 31, 32, please keep that. What scripture is that? Uh, let's do 28. I might be a little hallucinating. Let's do 28. Twenty-two, verse twenty-eight. Sorry, beloved. Where was I? Romans chapter eight, thirty-one. Huh? Romans. Romans eight, thirty-one, thirty-two says, "If while we were yet sinners, God gave us Jesus. While we were sinners, He gave us Jesus." How much more now that we are children of God, sons of God, will He not by grace, undeserved favor, give us all things? I was like, I gave you the best of heaven. There's nothing greater than Jesus. Yes. You don't have faith for that. And you don't have faith for healing. You don't have faith for this. You don't have faith for the lesser. We have to rise up. Jesus is coming back for a church who is triumphant. Yes. Isaiah 6 it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Romans 8, all of creation is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Not slaves, not, well, I'm just trying to hold them for one more day. You don't have strength for yourself, how are you going to have strength for somebody else? Come on. If I don't have faith for my, if I have $100 every month, 
and I use hundred dollars for myself. I've got nothing to give away. So I choose not to live like that. I choose that I have capacity. And if 100 is what I need, then I have to move up to 200 so that I can have something to give away. Praise because Lord. as I give, I will receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that goes for love. It goes for kindness. It goes for friendship. It goes for faith. It goes for encouragement. It goes for comfort. Check your faith level to see if you're still in the faith. Check your tank. Check your speedometer. If there are any lights that are flashing and going for a service. Yes, yes, yes. And they go for these pirates' parts, pirate parts. It's cheap, but you know, go for the genuine thing. Go to the manufacturer. If you're not going for a week, so it's going for a week, a month. Just let him just clean you up. Get your head screwed up right. Blow out the chaff. Fill you up with the word. Because the light comes. Watch what he says. You will what? Declare a thing. And what? What you declare will be established for you. Next part of that verse. So that light will shine on your paths or your ways. So, it does not, it's not saying that you need to understand how it works. That's not part of the, the, the equation, not the faith equation. Abram did not know. He just believed God. Romans 4 says, against hope, he believed and counted him worthy who made the promise. And do you know what he did? The Bible says, while he was waiting for the promise, he gave glory unto God. Yeah. That is what faith does. It's what Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7 says. Do not be anxious for anything but by prayer. It's not just any prayer. It is the prayer of Luke 11, 24. So I say to you, when you pray, believe that you've received it. And you are. That's the kind of phrase. And by the way, when you're praying and there's some stuff that's going on on the inside, you need to forgive. You better get rid of that stuff because it blocks the flow. Yes. Walk in forgiveness. So back to Philippians 4. So don't be anxious about anything. Anything. There's nothing that is not covered. But by prayer and supplication, here is the key. With thanksgiving. Yeah. You cannot complain and be thankful at the same time. You cannot be miserable. And grumbling at the same, and, I mean, couple, uh, giving thanks at the same time. Say what? What caused uh, two million Jews not to enter the Promised Land? Mm. Murmuring. murmuring instead of thanksgiving. Not only murmuring. This is what they said. They said, "In our eyes, our eyes, what we see, not what they see. We are saying." That in our eyes we are thinking or convinced that they think that we are grasshoppers. That's right. So they and the generation of walking around in circles for 40 years. Oh, help us, Lord. And later the book of Hebrews says they did not enter the promised land because they didn't combine the word with faith. The same gospel was preached to them. I was just like, oh, this is Thomas. It's so nice. He's got my good. He's on the floor. It's just talk, 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 talk. No power. Perhaps you could just take a day and go lie on the beach. You know, if it's just going to be years. This word has got power. Jesus has come 
to strengthen you this morning. Say, arise, shine. I'm for you. I am with you. More than that, I am in you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens All things. That's my, that's, that, is the, the, that is the word that must come out of my mouth. Oh, this is a difficult, this is a challenge, but Expect this one, but we can do all things. The first thing, 2 Corinthians 4 13. 2 Corinthians 4 13. I haven't gone through the rest, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop because I think this is where the anointing is, is having me. 2 Corinthians 4 13. Let's go to 12. To see what they say there. Okay, no, 30. And the next one. Okay. Let's go to 13 again. <clears throat> As it is written, so watch what he says. It doesn't say we have the gift of faith. Or you have faith, faith that comes by hearing. He says, we have the what? Spirit of faith. Your spirit has been regenerated. The spirit of faith is a spirit that is so flooded with the word that it is completely persuaded and convinced totally convicted that nothing is impossible for God. A spirit of faith. Not the gift of faith. Let the Holy Spirit. It's my spirit has been charged. So he says, since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what has been written, listen to this. I believe and therefore, I have spoken. <clears throat> what translation is that? So give, me, uh, yes. new, give me King James. New King James. I believed, and so therefore. I don't know, I don't know, I don't get, there it is. Uh, it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. In other words, if there's a therefore, we've got to look what is the therefore for. He said, I spoke because I believed. The inference is this. If I deal with a situation, I hear a report. I find myself in a circumstance or condition. And this is what he says. I believed, therefore have I spoken in the situation or about it. If I don't believe, if I do not have faith, what he's saying is, secure them. Don't talk. Don't open your mouth unless it is going to be faith. Because your words carry power. And confusion to the realm of the spirit. Then you're in, then you're out. Then it's yes, then it's no. James says such a person must not even think that they will receive anything from God because they are double-minded and unstable in all of their ways. Like a wave. Rolling out, going back, going. He says... You are, yes, then it's no. I'm in, yeah. Then I believe God. Oh, it's not going to work. I'm giving up. Okay, let me try. It's, what do you want? <laughs> you remember blind Bartimaeus? The blind guy who was sitting the side of the road. <clears throat> Everybody knew he was blind. Jesus passed and he saw him. He was blind. Just kept him walking. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. That's what he said. Jesus kept walking. 
Shout it out. Simon said, Josh, your mom, the master of the time for you. So all those disciples were from Louisiana. <laughs> And Jesus stood. And Tom, Thomas, who was a Cajun, he looked, he says, uh oh, oh, the master's fitting to do something. He said, bring him here. So watch this. Jesus knows he's black. Jesus knows he's big. He says, Master, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus says, I don't know what that means. Read the account. He asks him, what do you want me to do for you? He said, no, I need a shekel. I'll get some food. He, perhaps he just wanted a selfie with Jesus to do a Facebook post. Jesus was not going to assume that he wanted healing. What do you want me to do for you? Because it will be to you according to your faith. I will not violate your will. I put before you blessing and cursing, life and death, you choose. What do you want? So I believed, therefore have I spoken. What are you believing today about your situation, about your marriage, about your family, about your children, about your grandchildren, about your future? What do you believe? Take those thoughts out of your head and write it down. Examine your thoughts. Because perhaps that is what's making you sick. Yeah. I had a woman come to me in my office, I may have told this year. Fingers were all like curled up like this. She had arthritis, <coughs> rheumatism. She came from America. When I saw her, she was talking about, and, and she not only does she want healing, but she's so a horrible marriage and she's God must please just deliver her and save her husband because she's and she had this whole mess. Before that, before she shed that, the Lord said she has got a spirit of unforgiveness. She has to set her husband free. So when I spoke to her about it, that's what she's done. So forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgiveness is a choice. That's right. That's right. That is what love is. Love is patient. <coughs> love is kind. Love is not rude. Yes. Love doesn't not envy. Doesn't seek its own way. Love does not dishonor others. Doesn't rejoice with evil. Rejoices with the truth. That is what love is. And you are loved because God is love, and we've been created at, yes. in His image. As Jesus is, so are we in the world. We are loved. So that is what we must be. I must be kind. I must be gentle. I must be patient. Amen. Yes. And so she broke down. After a long time, it was a struggle, but she did. And then she said, "All right, I forgive." Him. The moment she forgave him, her fingers straightened out. She was healed. Do you know what the Bible says? Unforgiveness, bitterness, rise up the bones. Right. But it also blocks the arteries of faith that you cannot receive. And so when Peter said, I have a choice here. I can take my experience that I had last night, and that's very real, it's factual. I was here in this very place. There's no fish here. And I can take that and I can put it in the face of Jesus and say, there's the evidence, there's the statistics, this is the reality. 
Oh, I can realize that faith is higher than fact. Faith supersedes the realm of the natural because it operates from the realm of the spirit. Where there's no time. Yesterday, today, forever. All at the same time. That's what God is. He's yesterday, today, forever. He's the beginning and he's the end. There's nothing before him or after him. He is the beginning, Jesus. Time is somewhere sandwiched in between. And all of that is encapsulated in the great I am. Present. So, watch this. He can move a thousand years from now. Well, let's make it practical for you and I. He can move a year, let's say a week, a month, a year, five years from now for God. For us, it is time that must last for us to get there. But for him, those five years is right now. Because whether it's a year, five years, ten years, a hundred years, a thousand years, it's always I am. He's always in the present. So if you're in him, where you live and you move, you can move into the future and go and take your stuff and bring it into your now because for him it's like now. say the outworking of that is not important. The how is not important. The when is not important. In the physical outworking, in the reality of the spirit realm, when you say it, you greet it, you come into agreement. The word Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 that says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The original word says it is the title deed, which is the highest confirmation of ownership of property. This building belongs to the person who has the title deed. It signifies ownership. So he says, faith is the title deed. It doesn't matter whether it's tomorrow, a month, a year, two years. When you receive it by faith, it says, you have right here whatsoever you say it's done. That's it. The owner of this property doesn't have to be in it, possessive in order to own it. He can be living in New York. The owner of this property, I'm just making an example. All that is necessary is the title deed. So there might be people who are walking around with your stuff. <laughs> but if you have the title deed, it's a matter of time for the transfer to take place. <laughs> so I'm wrapping this up. I didn't get to where I wanted to go. This was the introduction. <laughs> Have a good two. One, two says, I will stand myself on the rampart. Watch what he says. And I will watch to see what he will say to me. Can you put that up? Two of us, one. One and two. Oh, okay, chapter two. I want you to see this. I'm going to land the plane. Come on, people. There, there's the open door that God has set before you. Yes. There are keys that He has given you. Keys of authority in the access. <coughs> the door is the rhema. Jesus said, John 10, I am the door. I 
will stand myself on my watch or rampart. I set myself on the tower. Watch this. I will watch to see what he will what? Say to me. That sounds grammatically incorrect. I will hear what he will say to me. Right? No. Because God is talking about vision. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He could see it, and so he could endure it. So, I will watch to see, because here is the deal. Taste and see. So, I'm watching to hear, because when he speaks, he will affect what I see. Go back to, Ab to Genesis 13. When God removed Lot from Abram, there's some relationships, some acquaintances, some connections that cannot walk through certain doors with you. And sometimes God just has to remove them. And you've got to get over that. Mourn the loss and say goodbye and so that you can move on into the destiny and the purpose of God. I'm not talking about marriage and stuff like that, the uh, covenant related. I'm just talking about there are certain people that just somehow cannot. It says, do not be deceived. Bad corrupt company corrupts good character. But the opposite is also true. <clears throat> good company. People who are of like mind and of faith. The Joshua, the Caleb says, come on, let's go. We can possess the land. Yes. So after Lot separates. Then the word of the Lord comes to Abram. He's hearing the word. He's eating the word. Ezekiel, eat the scroll. Yes. Jeremiah, eat the scroll. Jesus, eat the bread of life. Adam, live from the tree of life. Not the tree of knowledge of good and evil so that you can become. You already are. Just eat and feed from me and remain in me and you will bear fruit. Yeah. <clears throat> you don't have to try because you're in me. The fruit will just come. But watch this. When Abram hears the word, now his eyes open, he has a vision, and now he can see. As far as his eye can see, God says, if you can see it, you can have. I believe they have spoken. But I've got to watch to see what he says to me. Because when he speaks, <clears throat> Romans 10, 17, that's how faith comes. And faith is the eye of the Spirit. Mm. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Moses. By faith, Able by faith, Enoch by faith. The just shall live by. Yes. Not exist. Yeah. I believe God has come this morning to lift you up, to strengthen you. I'm with you. I'm for you. Yes, Jesus. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. But you are a co-worker with him. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me land with this. And then I'm going to taxi to the gate. When you taxi to the gate, I'm going to throw in those other two points. So we've landed now. Okay. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God. Ephesians 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is going to bless us? Hmm? 
Give us the New King James Version of this that you guys seceded from. Um, but you left King James in England. Why did you bring him with him um, in the Bible? I thought you ran away from the guy. Isn't that true? Okay. Let's leave, okay. Let's, let's leave James in London. All right. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is going to bless us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, if you can believe. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Just again, everybody who believes that, say amen. Amen. Do you know what you just said amen to? <laughs> By the way, amen means? Let it be so. So let it be. But you know something? In Revelations, Jesus says, This says he, who is faithful and who is the amen. Yeah, that's right. Every promise of God, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, is yes and amen in the amen. Yes. yes. So if I step out of unbelief and into Jesus, out of doubt, into Christ, into the Word, into the Amen. I give my Amen to God. Because he says, verse 20, and the Amen is spoken by us to God through Jesus. And Jesus is the high priest of our confession, Hebrews chapter 5. Consider him who is the high priest of so now that he's waiting for your confession. What is the word that is coming from the earth into that realm? Because you have not going to be blessed. The guys that said amen to that, that's not right. You have been blessed. You have already been blessed, but the blessing is where? In spiritual places or in heavenly places or in the spirit realm. This is where it is, in heavenly places. But it's not a problem. Because Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 says, You are seated with Christ there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right yes. So you are next to your stuff. <laughs> Why is that important? You have to understand. And science backs this up. They now discover that the realm of creation is in the invisible. The realm of manifestation is on the physical. And for all these many, many thousands of years, they've been studying classical physics, which is the external world. But now they discovered there's an entire universe. From which the invisible operates to govern the external. Mm. That's biblical. So he's saying that we have been blessed in heavenly places, in the invisible realm. Please listen to this. The spirit realm is the realm of creation. This is not the realm of creation. That's right. This chair That's right. originated. In the invisible realm. Yes. It started in somebody's thoughts. He saw it. So everything that is created is always created twice. In the invisible realm. Then this person. Now when he decides. Wow there is a chest. I see it. I see it. It's done. I'm going to make a stuff. Oh, I wonder. No, I'm going to make a chair. Now he communicates that chair, that vision, that reality through his words to the architect or the engineer. 
and they build in this realm what already exists in the other realm. That's the genesis of creation. What we do is we want to change our world by trying to arrange stuff on the outside. By moving things here. The way you impact the outside is by changing the inside. Come on, yes, yes, Lord. You have whatsoever you say and words are spoken thoughts. You're not happy. You're not satisfied with the external. Let God affect your eyes so that you can see what He sees. That you can see what He has prepared for you. Eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, what hasn't come up in your mind, what God has prepared for those who love Him. God, why did you make me? What is the plan that you have? What are the resources you want to bring into my hand so that I can fulfill your purpose on the earth? Yes. When I see it, I now speak it. I believe it. I give thanks for it. It must happen. It must. Otherwise, God is a liar. And the world of sending people to the moon based on that. Building a civilization in Mars. Going thousands of feet into the belly of the sea based on that. It's not a thumbs up. So the keys of the kingdom. Jesus said, I have the key. And he's the one who would sit on the throne of David to extend his kingdom forever. The eternal kingdom of David is wrapped up and enveloped in the kingdom of God. So Matthew 16, when Jesus says to Peter and to the disciples, I'm taxing to the, to the gate, right? I'm about to switch off the edge. He says, who do people say I am? Because there's some people who say, oh, he's a prophet. He's a good guy. He's the son, when he came to his own hometown, they said he's the son of Mary and Joe. We went to Nazareth Elementary with him. And the Bible says, and Jesus could do no miracles there because of their lack of faith. Because they didn't receive him, you see. Just, just, who do you say I am? Because I will be to you according to your faith. <coughs> That is the key that unlocks the door. I am the door. But the revelation of who I am will unlock the door to give you access to all that I have. So they say the disciples, some say you're a prophet, some say Elijah. I says, okay, let's 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 cut the chase. Who do you say? And Peter opens his mouth and he says. You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. And Jesus says, Whoa, watch this. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. This didn't come from this realm. You just pulled a truth from the spirit realm. Jesus. My Father. Make you see. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Now watch. Because you see like that, he goes on. Now the Catholic Church has got this all twisted. He said, You are Peter Petros, little rock. Yes. And on this revelation, yes, I like Petra. Yeah. Different word. If he was going to 
Peter, Peter, the foundation of the church, he could have said, you are Peter and on you I'm going to build the church now. That's what the Catholic church, the church claimed, the papacy started with Peter and then, you know, it's two different words. That's right. He says, you are Petros, little rock. A pebble. But on the bedrock, the solid, yes. immovable yes. bedrock of my word and this revelation, Hallelujah. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against you if you have that revelation that comes from this realm. Yes. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. This is Matthew 16, Matthew 18. Let me backtrack. I'm still with 16. And what you bind on will be but the, real, the, 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 the real translation is you will be able to bind here what has already been bound there. And you'll be able to loosen here what has already been loosened there. In other words, you can bring the reality as it is in heaven. The keys of the kingdom will enable you to bring the reality, the way God sees things, into this realm. So Lazarus is dead for four days. That's the reality on the earth. But it's not the reality in heaven. So when Jesus waits before Lazarus uh, for four days, what he's doing, he is looking to see what must happen on the earth realm? And when he sees there's going to be a resurrection, after four days he stands in front of the tomb of Lazarus. Father, I thank you that you always hear me. And now I will do as it is in heaven and earth. Lazarus, come forth. Five loaves, two fishes. Not sufficient, not enough here in this realm. But in this realm, hey Philip, what do you guys have? Bring me some. We have nothing except five loaves and two fishes. And John 6 says the following. And Jesus said that knowingly what he was going to do before it happened. He knew he was going to multiply the loaves. So there's a practical situation of insufficiency and lack in the earth. And Jesus demonstrates to us how he takes from the realm of limitless provision and limitless possibilities and he comes into the earth and releases the blessing of God. Go through every, every miracle in the gospel. You would see this reality on earth and what Jesus does is he goes into this realm yes, yes. and he brings it here. One more. Just give, give it. I mean, we can go through. Uh, uh, Jairus goes through Jesus. Daughter is 12 years old, laying sick in bed. Jesus says, okay, I'll go with you. And he's on his way. And as they go there, two of his servants meet him and says, hey, bad news. We're not having a resurrection anymore. I mean, a healing anymore. There's going to be a funeral. We'll die. The NIV original says the following. Please listen, this is what it says. And Jesus, comma, ignoring what they said. That's what it says. They come to Jairus and say, listen, your girl just died. And it says, Jesus says, oh, I'm so sorry. And Jesus, ignoring what they said, turned to Jairus and said, do not. When he got to the room and people were crying, the mourners, he took them and he put unbelief out. Yes. In fact, he didn't even take all of his disciples there. He only took three. Because there are certain gates and doorways that are not open for everybody. Mm. That's only open mm. for those who walk in faith. Mm. He said, girl, I know the doctor declared you dead. I saw the death certificate, but I say to you, get up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. So on the bedrock of this revelation, I am the Christ. I am God in the flesh. Get that revelation. Peter, you got it. And because of that, I give you the keys of the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is what he says to you. I think in closing, 
the key unlocks the door. He says, not only do I give you the key, but I am the door. Mm. And I've said before, you're an open door. Mm. Whatever you're facing today, the Lord is saying, yes. I want to let you walk through that door. I am that door. Put your faith in me. Luke 11, 52, can you put that out? Please. That's the last scripture. <clears throat> Woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away the what? The key of knowledge. You did not enter in yourselves and those who were entering in. You hindered. I have the key of David, Jesus says. I have the keys of the kingdom. I have the keys of knowledge. And the keys of knowledge is the revelation of who I am. It's the right amount. And it's the solid bedrock of my word. And if you have those, now you can go through the door. Because I am the door. I'm the right when you have a word from me, faith comes, and now nothing is impossible. This is not religious. Unbelievers can practice this because it's the principle of faith. Jesus said, yeah. Whoever has power and authority in your mouth. As you think so you are. You think you're defeated? You are defeated. You think you are discouraged? Then you are discouraged. So you mentioned it. David said, I will say to my soul, my spirit will speak to my soul. So why are you so downcast? You're not, you're not aiding me. You're not helping me, bro. What's up with you today? Where is the problem? Because my house cannot be divided. If we're going to go left or we're going to right, then all of us must go there. It's not just my spirit, it must be my words, my thoughts, my emotions, my body, everything of me must go. That's why the first commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Go in one direction. A house divided against itself cannot stand. So God is saying, get ourselves together. Get back in Christ. Get back in the Word. Take the keys and walk through the door. He says, I put before you an open door that no one can shut. Let's stand. Did anybody receive something this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the great thing is when you walk through the door, your children walk through the door. Your grandchildren walk through the door. You make a way. And sometimes, remember what he says? Not only am I the one who opens the door that no one can shut, but I also shut the door that no one can open. And sometimes for you to go through open doors, we've got to have some closed doors. They introduce in our banking system in South Africa a new security system in the banks. And so one day I went in with my friend. I opened the first door. I walked into a cubicle. And then I wanted to open the second door that leads into the bank, but I didn't want to open up. My friend was standing, the door was the first door was open. There's hardly space for two people. So I was trying to push open the second door, and I just didn't want to open. And the security guard came to me and he said, Fine, this door will not open unless that door behind you is closed. Sometimes that's true about relationships. Sometimes that's true about old habits. 
Sometimes that's true about identity. Sometimes it's true about situations that you want to hold on to the past and you want to have the future. No, you've got to close the door behind you and only once the door is shut will you be able to walk into what God has for you. Do you understand, sweetie? God has a plan of restoration for you. That is so beautiful. I see the Lord all over you, the whole, whole source. He wants you to know that you are beautiful, you are a treasure to his heart. And you may be to hell and back, but God's got a plan and a purpose of restoration for you. He says, Behold, I make all things brand new. He's giving you a hope in the future. Your scripture is Jeremiah 29. God says, the plans that I have for you, what's your name? The plans that I have for you, Sarah, are plans to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. God has your story. Don't let your history determine your future. He's got a story for you, and it's going to end with glory. circumstance do I trivialize or make small your pain or your situation because I'm not in your shoes please don't think that let us not compare and say oh that is nothing everybody's pain is relevant to them everybody's story is their story and it's their shoes and it's it's their reality but I've come to tell you that there is a higher reality for you God has got so much better in mind and in store for you, beloved. So reach out your hands. I do not want to take more of your time. 